Chess Goals Catalan Course, game number one. I'm playing a 1770 rated player. And in this game, I want to highlight the capture on d5 and when it's good to do so, trying to mess up Black's pawn structure. So the first thing to note in this course, we recommend 3g3. The reason for this is because oftentimes Black wants to play the Queen's Indian defense, but with a quick g3, that's actually not a great idea because we get our bishop to g2, hitting the rook before that bishop can come to b7. So we see d5 by my opponent, and now we get into what's called the closed Catalan. This is going to be chapter two from the course. And at this point, I played b3. It's a bit of a strategic mistake, and I'll show you why. What I wanted to do here was take this good bishop from black's side, the bishop that's the opposite color of black's pawns, and I wanted to trade it for technically what is my bad bishop because it's the same color as the d pawn. So I wanted this trade. But this is not the best idea, and in the course, I'm recommending queen to c2, and we'll see this in other games as well. Uh, the nice thing about queen to c2 is that we can do the standard plan of knight b to d2, go for e4, and get this three-pawn center. We're going to talk about the three-pawn center a lot. It's the way for us to gain a space advantage, which is a really good way for us to convert those positions with tactics later on. So b3, slight mistake. My opponent plays b6. Now something to note here, whenever black plays b6 and they also have this triangle formation in the center, oftentimes we want to take on d5 at the right moment. And the reason for that is because if black takes with the e pawn, it weakens the c pawn. If they take with the c pawn, it traps in the c8 bishop in sort of like an exchange slob structure where both of these c pawns are gone. So I played bishop to a3 first, these swap. And in hindsight, this knight was a little bit misplaced on a3. It really wishes it was on c3 or d2 at this point. Queen e7. And now here's a critical move. I'm ahead in development. We see that the black king needs to castle. The c8 bishop needs to develop. The knight on a3 is being attacked. I play c takes d5. And this gets the chess.com brilliant symbol, as you see here. I exchange on d5 for that reason we just talked about. Black has to choose, take with the c pawn or take with the e pawn. My opponent chooses to take with the e pawn, but now we got this weakness on c6. That's the biggest weakness on the board, and we can chip away at this. So this is how we're going to try to convert this Catalan advantage. If my opponent grabs the knight, queen takes a3. That's probably something you're thinking, could he just take the knight? Here I have d takes c, kicking this knight away. And now I can bring my knight to the center. And look at this bishop cutting all the way across the board. If black tries to block with the knight, knight to d5, I can kick this with e4 and then play d5. And this is a crushing attack. This is already a stockfish five-point advantage, maybe six points. These pawns are marching up the board, and there's nothing black can do about it. And black is not ready to castle either. So c takes d5, very strong move. My opponent takes with e. And now I drop this knight back because the knight was being attacked on a3, knight to e4, and now I play my knight to e3. And the idea here with the knight on e3, I'm actually thinking about knight to f5, and I also want to pressure this d pawn, so I'm making it harder for black to push their c pawn. So now I'm just advancing my pieces, trying to slightly improve each piece. The knight's much stronger on e5, applying pressure here. My opponent cards with the bishop. Now look what I'm doing, another attacker on c6. So I'm going to try to make this Catalan course very easy to understand. And in this game, what we did was we took that development advantage. We changed the pawn structure slightly to create this weakness on c6. And now one piece after another, we're trying to attack the c6 pawn. It's really pretty simple chess so far. Nothing crazy has happened, and we're up one point according to Stockfish. Rook c8, and now I play b4. What I like about this move is both b and d pawns are guarding the c5 square. Oftentimes what black wants to do to fight back in the center is to play pawn to c5 themselves. So it's very important to try to block this c5 move. And again, I'm kind of tempting my opponent with a free pawn, but this is actually losing. So after queen takes, I can grab the knight. And there's two options here, king takes or knight takes. Knight takes loses to a really nice tactic. Knight takes d5 because the c pawn is pinned. And king takes, the strongest move in the position, runs into bishop to h3 check, skewering the king to the rook. So this pawn sacrifice is actually not capturable by black. 
and it also has the useful purpose of defending c5. And I'm also trying to kind of weaken this c pawn as well. Like maybe I'll play b5 at some point. So my opponent castles. And here I bring the queen out. And I think at this point there's already a clear advantage for me. I'm targeting this pawn and this pawn with the queen. So giving black a lot of things to think about. But here my opponent surprises me. He plays knight to d2. And I did not consider this idea. The knight actually wants to head back to c4. And then black wants to play b5. Creating this solid structure with the knight on c4. And trying to make it difficult for me to apply pressure to the pawn on c6. I thought black was going to play b5 there. So here I play rook f to d1. Bringing another piece into the game. Defending d4. Taking this knight away. And at this point I decide to chop the knight off. Because that knight was just too strong. And my opponent plays the best move, b5. It wasn't as good to take here because then I'm going to grab a pawn and the other pawns are kind of falling for black. So b5 was a critical move. I take this pawn. My opponent takes the knight. So at this point, I'm up one pawn of material. And I play queen to c5, offering the queen trade. If black takes on c5 and I take back, this is actually a nice long-term structure because the d7 bishop is just stuck back there. My knight is a monster on e5, pressuring the c pawn, and I have a passed a pawn with the rooks ready to get behind it. So I don't think black should take, and my opponent did decline the trade. At this point, I should go a4. a4 is definitely the strongest move. Just start pushing that passed pawn up the board. It's a good way to create problems for black. Instead, I played rook to c3, rook to a8, and now rook to e3. This move I do like. The rook switches from being a passive piece, which is just blocking the c-pawn, to a very active piece. And this is something I want you to keep in mind in these Catalan positions. We want to play active. We want to create threats. And we want to give our opponents chances to mess up. That's exactly what I'm doing with rook to e3. I'm creating threats where this knight will move, attacking the queen with the rook. My opponent gets the queen out of the way. Here I play queen to d6. This was a mistake. I should have played rook to f1 and allowed black to take on a2, knowing that I have knight takes c6 in the end. And after these trades, I have the pass b pawn running up the board, the bishop pressuring this weakest pawn on the board. And it's a pretty good advantage for white. You know, black is definitely still in the game. They have a nice pawn on c4. It's a pass pawn, a rook on a2. But this would have held an advantage for me. Uh, when I play queen to d6, this actually lets the advantage slip if black plays rook takes a2. My opponent did not find it, though. Played queen to c2 instead, trying to get active with the queen. And here I brought the rook back. So at this point, I was low on time, and I put in the notes after I played the game that I'd stopped notating at this point. But I was able to reconstruct the game afterwards so we can see how this finishes. Um, and then we'll kind of go back through at the very end and talk about the main takeaways which all occurred in the first 23 moves, we're now at move 24. So I'm going to show you the finish quickly, and then we'll look at the takeaways. My opponent retreats, and I grab this C pawn. So now I have pass pawns A and B ready to run up the board. Rook takes. I grab this pawn, and now you can see the advantage for white, because this pawn is ready to push. I have queen and rook active, kind of eyeing this black king. Queen to C6. A bit of a mistake, but I was threatening a back rank mate and my opponent missed it in time pressure. Okay, so the main takeaways. Move 7, exchanging the bishops was not the best idea, right? So bishop to a3. It looked good at first, trying to trade off the bad bishop, but that wasn't the best idea. I should have just played queen to c2 here, play for e4. So that's a negative takeaway, one to improve on. c takes d5 on move 10. This was a great decision. Noticing that black cannot take on a3 and creating this pawn structure that we talked about after e takes d and then black has the weakness on c6. The third takeaway, which was a positive, was move 22, rook to e3. This is the key to be active in the Catalan, right? When you get to these middle games, keep your pieces active. And then the last takeaway, move 23, queen to d6. This was just a mistake close to time pressure. Um, I should have played rook to f1 here, or maybe even knight takes d7, but queen to d6 was the wrong idea and allowed black 
get right back into the game. All right, so this was Catalan game number one. We'll see you guys in game number two.